Today, we're going to talk about present perfect and present perfect continuous in a comparative sense. Our focus actually is on present perfect continuous, but I want us to understand the key differences between the two tenses. And so I'm gonna start out by showing you how they are constructed differently. With present perfect, we have the subject, then have or has, plus the past participle. So for example, I have eaten. Eaten is the past participle. Eat, ate, eaten. Now, we, another example, she has arrived home. Has, and then past participle, arrived. Now for present perfect continuous, the construction is as follows. Subject, plus has, have, has or have. Then we have been, which is different. And then we have present plus the present participle, which is the verb plus ing. That's the present participle. I have been eating. I have been studying. She or he has been studying. So that's how we construct these two tenses. They're similar, but with past perfect continuous, we add another word, been, and then we add the present uh, participle with the ing. So now let's begin. Before we do that, let's just take a reminder on the purpose or role of the present perfect tenses both the present perfect and the present perfect continuous. It's, to, it's an action that begins in the past with a present implication, a present day now implication. So I have studied every day this week means I've studied Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because it's Wednesday evening. I could also say that statement on Thursday morning. I could say on Thursday morning, I've studied every day this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Or now with present perfect continuous, you can see that the action oftentimes is ongoing. So if there's a little difference, it's that with continuous, the action is, all, is still in progress in many instances. Not in all instances, but in many instances. I have been studying all day, which means I started in the morning and I'm still studying till now. You called and I'm still studying. So it hasn't stopped. And so there's a slight difference there between present perfect and present perfect continuous. Let's look at the four main differences between the two tenses. And then after we look at the four differences, we're gonna have a quiz where you participate and try to answer the correct, uh, the correct option. So difference number one, present perfect focuses on the result whereas present perfect continuous or progressive, we can say progressive, focuses on the activity. So let's take a look at the examples. On the result, I've done my homework. That means I finished it. And in this sense, it functions like past simple. I did my homework. I've done my homework. You could use either. Now, with present perfect continuous, I've been studying all day, which means most likely you're still studying. Difference number two. Past perfect says how many and past perfect continuous says how long. So let's take a look on the left. I've exercised every day this week. That means I've exercised Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Today's Wednesday evening where I'm at, so I could say it only if I exercise today, which I have. So then uh, how long, present perfect continuous, we have she's been studying for seven hours. She started studying seven hours ago and is still studying. 
So for how long, for seven hours, for how many every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now difference number three, we have on past present perfect describes a completed action which is a little bit like simple past. This is the overlap that I've discussed last week. And then uh, on pre the present perfect continuous, it describes an action that may continue, that may be continuing. I've sent you my homework, which means I sent it this morning or yesterday. That would be, that, that, that's when you would use present perfect. If I sent it last week, I probably wouldn't use I've sent. I would use I sent, simple past. I sent you my homework last week. If you sent it this morning, you could say I've sent you. And that tells the listener that you sent it recently, very recently. All right. And with pre present perfect continuous, I've been doing my homework, which means... I'm still doing it. It's a continuous action. You see now how present perfect continuous has even more to do with the present and the ongoing activity. Now present uh, number four is a little bit different, a little bit tricky. Um, in present perfect, we don't have this option, but in present perfect continuous, if there, we use it if there's evidence of recent activity. So for example, if you see ice on the ground and I see ice on the ground outside, I can say there is ice on the ground. It has been snowing. This is a, a perfectly, uh, this is the opportune time to use present perfect continuous or the floor next to the open window is, sorry, is wet. I forgot that, is wet. So I could say, it has been raining. That's the conclusion I make based on my observation. The floor is wet, thus it has been raining. All right, I've gone through those very quickly, but what I'd like to do now is turn the tables and have a little quiz that I'd like you to participate in and so we're going to go through it. I'm going to go, we have seven short questions. You have to decide which is more appropriate, present perfect or present perfect continuous. Here we go. Question one, mm, the windows all day without any help. I, mm, the windows all day without any help. Which one is that? <clears throat> all right. I've been washing the windows all day. Remember this continuous aspect, meaning you might still be washing. So that, that one, I've been washing, it's A, deals with difference number one. You focus on the activity. I've been studying all day. I've been washing the windows all day without any help. Let's go to number two. Let's try it. Take a look and come up with your answer. You look nice. Have you mm, your haircut? All right. You look nice. Have you had your haircut? So this is present perfect. Have you had your haircut? And this is rule number three, describes a completed action. You've already cut your hair. Have you had your hair cut recently? That's the implication. Have you had your hair cut recently? Let's take a look. So let, there's number two again. Have you had your hair cut? It's already done. Now, number three, take a look. Has someone, mm, my special bread, there's only a little bit left. All right, so the answer is, has someone been eating my special bread? Now let's talk about this, because you could say, has someone eaten 
my special bread, but that means they've eaten all of it. But with present perfect continuous, the action is sort of still there. Uh, I, we'll talk about the rule, but has someone been eating my special bread means that it's, it, it might not all be eaten. And we know from the second sentence, it's not. There's only a little bit left. So logically, present perfect is not possible. I have, it, has someone, has someone uh, eaten my special bread? Means they ate all of it. So there can't be a little left. So it must be A, has someone been eating my special bread? And this is rule number four evidence of a recent activity. You notice that your bread is, there's only this much left of your bread. And so then you say, has someone been eating? That's an observation you make based on a recent activity. All right, let's move on to number four. Mm, four goals and it's only half time. Which one would it be? All right, the correct answer is they've scored four goals and it's only half time. And the rule here is number one, focus on the result. The result is the four goals. It's in the past, in fact, and it functions a little bit like simple past. They've scored four goals and it's only half time. All right, let's go to number five, five of seven. I've mm, English for three years and soon I'm going to be using it at work. I've English for three years. I've been learning English for three years. I've been learning English for three years and this is how long? for th seven hours in this example, for three years in the example number five. I've been learning English for three years. Now let's go to number six. Which one is correct? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not crying. I've mm, onions. Okay, here we go. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not crying. I've been chopping onions. I've been chopping onions. So that's again, rule number four. You have a recent evidence of a recent activity. You notice someone's crying and then you make an observation. I've not been, I'm not crying. I've been chopping onions. I've been chopping onions. Let's go to the last one. Sorry I'm late. How long? I think we know this one. Perhaps most of us have this one. I, sorry I'm late. How long have you been waiting? You're still waiting when he arrives or she arrives. And that's number four. I'm sorry, number three. Um, describes an action that may be continuing. How long have you been waiting? You're still waiting when they arrive. So how long have you, and it's a how long question. So that also refers to, um, this is the number two as well. How long have you been waiting? I've been waiting for 30 minutes. Where have you been? All right, let's look at the conclusions very briefly. Now here's a point for teachers. I suggest that you focus on one of the functions or one of the differences that I've outlined. One of the functions of, uh, one function of past, a present, perfect, continuous. Focus on one at a time. I would not introduce all aspects or all functions of the verb in one setting. I've done it here on my live because it's taped and people can rewatch it and stop it. But in general, young students especially are liable to be confused. So I would focus on one and then the next one, you know, practice the first and then 
and then rehearse the second one after they understand the first. And finally, another teaching tip, which I'm sure a lot of us already use, teaching in comparison with present perfect can be very helpful. It's a review of the present perfect, and it also reinforces the difference between the two tenses. I hope that's helped you. Now, I want to just remind